If you are on Linux, one of the ways that you can choose to run this program is to use pip install. Here I've got a folder that I'm going to install it into. Choose any folder you wish. The first thing you want to do is create a virtual environment, which we'll do uh, in this particular way. Now that we have a virtual environment, we just need to activate it. And the reason we do this is so that we're not messing with our local uh, install of Python. Okay, most shells will have some kind of parentheses over here to let you know that you've got a new virtual environment. Now the first thing you want to do is upgrade pip. And then you just want to go ahead and install the latest version of Extra Life Donation Tracker. And it'll grab it as well as all of its dependencies. All right, and finally, to launch the GUI, you just type Python M donationtracker.gui and there you go and if you needed to use the command line uh, you would just type .cli instead of .gui and finally I just want to show you what it's gonna look like when you're running it here you see right here what it looks like as it's running now I'm gonna go in the video over to Windows because it functions the same way whether you're on Windows or Linux, and rather than continually, rather than create a bunch of repeats of the same material, I'll just. Thanks. Okay, so the important first, so this will be blank uh, for you. Mine will eventually refresh with my information because I've used it before. And then um, this command line uh, thing here, I've got it here because it gives you some information on what's going on. So you can kind of use that if you're having issues to, sh to let me know what's going on and what's going wrong. And I'll, I also use it to communicate to you if there are things going wrong. Usually if anything here is red, that means something happened that was unexpected. Uh, on the off chance that there's a bug that causes everything to crash, and you're on Windows, what you want to do then is uh, use PowerShell to start it up, and then it, the errors will remain on this command line because this one will disappear if the program crashes, okay? If you're on Linux, uh, because the GUI is exactly the same except it'll match your uh, window settings, you know, it, it, instead of this, it'll look like the decorations you have on Linux. I'm just making one video because everything else is exactly the same. If you're on Linux, instead of having this command line pop up, you'll have launched it from a command line. And so that'll be there for you to check for any issues that are happening. Okay, so that's how you launch it. Let's take a look first at the settings window. So this is all the information you need to enter in order for the program to work. So the first thing you need is your participant ID. And where do you find that? Well, if you were to go to your extra life page, so this one's gonna bring mine up. All right, so here's, here's my page. And uh, yeah, if you have a web browser that hides the entire URL, you just wanna click up here and you'll see that the URL ends with participant ID equals and then a number. So you just want to copy that number and paste it right into the settings right here. Okay. The next thing you want to do is you want to set your text folder. So your text folder is a, the most important part for how this program works. It will take all the information that it grabs from the Extra Life website and write it to text files, which you'll then use in either OBS or XSplit to display the information you want to display. And we'll get to that in the next section. 
The other thing you can do that's important here is to make sure you've copied and pasted or typed in the right participant ID. You can validate it and it'll tell you that either you have yours right or you completely accidentally entered someone else's, which would be one heck of a coincidence. And you can see here that there was information telling you that, yes, we were able to reach, uh, reach that website. Okay. Your team ID, it's very similar. You would just click on the team that you're part of. Then up here, you see your team ID. You put it in there, validate your team ID. You're good. Uh, currency symbol, just, uh, I think in all the places where Extra Life is run, America and Canada, it's a dollar sign, but you can change it to whatever you wanted it to be. For donors to display, this is, and again, I'll demonstrate this in the next section, but this is how many of the last X number of donors do you want to appear on the screen? So I'm usually okay with five, but I don't have a ton of donors. Um, you'll have to, it'll depend on how many you get. And also it'll depend on how many you want to show on the screen at once. Cause it could potentially, you know, overrun your screen. Then th these two parts here, the tracker image and the donation sound, uh, this is so that when someone donates, it'll show up a little pop-up on your screen and you can have whatever image you want there and whatever sound you want to play. If you don't have anything to use, you can click on grab from GitHub and it'll download the file for you. Uh, it'll be an, an image file and a sound. So if, uh, let me show you what that'll look like. Now this is green so that you can make the green disappear in OBS or XSplit, but this is what the alert will look like. Now you see how the words there are too big. Well, that's the next part here. You can change the font and the, and the color. So I'm gonna change the font to be smaller, let's say 24, let's see how that looks. Okay, maybe that's a little smaller than I want, but you can kind of play around and see, maybe 26 works a little better. But anyway, whatever you want it to be. So we'll see exactly how you use this in the next section. You can change the color, maybe you don't like white text, maybe you want the text to be red. And you can change the background color. Maybe you don't want to use a uh, green chroma key. Maybe you want to use blue um, or some other color. You, whatever color you want to erase uh, in case you need it to, I guess, not match with the uh, the color of the, the image you have there. So go back and put it to green. Did that, did that take? Let me see. Green. No, that didn't take. Got to bring this way up. There we go. All right, so we're back to green. All right, when you're done with everything, just hit save. If halfway through you get to some kind of mistake and you don't know what to do, you can hit revert and it'll go back to whatever it was the last time you opened it. Now, I just wanna show you really quickly what kind of image you want if you wanna have some image there. You want to have a transparent image, usually a PNG file, and you want it to look like this. You want there to be if you were to open it in, in Photoshop, a whole bunch of dots here uh, or a checkered background, that means that all of this is, is transparent and whatever you have here will show behind it. If this was white, that's not gonna look good when you put it in into the tracker for OBS. You want it to be a transparent background and then whatever image you have, right? So as you can see, when I bring a background back, because it's transparent, you see me and you see me in front of this thing, right? So that's the type of image you want. You could find them all over the internet or you can make your own. Okay, that's everything you need to know for the setup. This window here was the tracker. Oops, let's uh, open that up again. We'll move it over. Progress bar hasn't been implemented yet. Uh, force refresh is if you want to uh, refresh the information on this window, it refreshes about every 15 minutes, but maybe that's not, uh, sorry, every 15 seconds, maybe you need it to come in a little faster, fine. But this is kind of a representation of most of the information that's in the text files that this program collects. So it kind of gives you a 
chance to do a sanity check that the information is what you expect it to be because this is drawing from those text files. Uh, in fact, let me open up the folder so you can see what the text files look like. Okay, so let's take a look at the top five, te top five team participants. And there you go. So uh, this should match what's here. Alia, James, myself, Martin, and Zelda. So you see it's all there. That's where it's grabbing it from. When everything is all set, all you need to do is hit run. And it'll give you a few messages here about the settings. And once you start seeing timestamps appear on here, that's how you'll know that it's grabbing the data from the API and it'll start updating your text files, which we'll see in the next section. And this data will also update every 15 seconds or so if there is a new change. So if someone donates or something changes while it's running. So if anything, if you see anything red here that it couldn't reach the API, sometimes that happens on game day. Too many people are trying to use it. One of the years we had a DDoS attack on Extra Life. And so it couldn't be provided. It'll show it on there. Um, at this point, I think I've covered most of the cases where there could be a crash due to that. So the software shouldn't crash, it just won't update. But if it does crash, feel free to file an issue and let me know so that I can try and fix it. When you're done, you can hit stop and go to file quit, or you can just go file quit and it'll stop either way. Uh, a couple quick things here so that you can check for updates. It'll let you know if you have the latest version or not. You can see a, the about page, which gives you some information on where to file bugs and so forth. And finally, if you go to documentation here, it'll launch the web page with the documentation as we saw before. So now let's move on to the next section. How do we use this in OBS? Okay, so I've now started up OBS and you don't have to have it in this studio mode. This just allows me to show you what I'm doing and what it's going to look like or what you're trying to set up. So. Over here is essentially what you'd be doing as the user, and here is what the people who are watching you in the live stream or on the video that you put on YouTube would see. So let's start off with the tracker. The tracker was the thing that was that said you have a donation, right? So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna add a window capture okay and uh, you can see I've done it in the past but I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do tracker 2021 okay so what window do I want to capture we're gonna go to the tracker you're gonna say uh, window title must match and there you go so there it is and if I, and at the moment you see see there it is and I just realized you haven't been hearing the sound, so I will very quickly add that in. You got a donation. There we go. All right, so obviously that's not what you want. So let's go here and we'll click on filters. And you'll click on Uh, chroma key and boom you see it just disappeared and now it looks like this you got a donation and uh, the reason there's some kind of weirdness around the letters there I think has something to do with the particular shade of green that I picked rather than leaving it at the green that it was but you can kind of play around with that to make it fit your situation now just to kind of give you a better idea of what it will look like when it's over something. I'm just gonna add myself in really quickly. There I am. And we'll make this like this. 
And now we'll pretend that I had a donation while I'm talking. Hey, I'm playing a video game and I'm talking. You got a donation. Oh, right. I have to add it behind. Right. You got to make sure this is the topmost thing. That's an important thing. There you go. So, hey, folks. Da -da 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 -da. You got a donation. Oh, thank you for the donation, David, Kendra, and Kyra. And then it'll disappear on its own. And there you go. So, I'm going to turn myself off. All right. What else might you want to add? Well, let's say you want to have a scroll on the bottom of everyone that has donated to you. So you would go into here and add a text source. And I, like you, you see here, I've done it before in the past when I was doing previous donations, uh, pre previous tutorials. Let's do a scrolling example. Now you wanna do here, read from file and browse. You've gotta go to the location where, where you chose in your folder before that you wanted to save stuff. And you want any, uh, you can scroll up and down I'm going to do a horizontal scroll. That's more typical. So anything that ends in horizontal. So I'm going to do names and messages horizontal. And there you go. That's what that looks like. So it's kind of huge. I don't think that's exactly what I'd like. So let's go to select font and let's try maybe 72. There we go. All right. So then what you want to do is go to uh, filters and scroll then you've got a horizontal and a vertical speed so horizontal you can go forwards or backwards whatever makes sense uh, you know in America with English reading left to right you probably want it to go this way right so you want to go this way you can make it go as fast or as slow as you want so there you go so as your donations are coming in See the ones here where it's my name and none. I didn't have a message. Uh, David had a message. Please stop killing me in Spelunky. Um, if most of your donors don't have messages, um, then instead of name amount message horizontal, we would have just done name amount horizontal. And now you see it's just money, no messages. So it's up to you depending on what most people who are donating to you are doing in your live stream. So you have that, obviously. There are also, um, you know, perhaps you don't want any any scrolling, something that's just um, persistent on there, right? So you can have your uh, last donor. So you can do the last donation or the last donor. So those are. Not, nece not necessarily the same, but they might be. Because if the same donor makes more than one donation, those could be different. Go ahead and do this one. So again, you uh, may wish to make the font smaller. Oh, that's a little too small though. <laughs> Maybe somewhere around 18. Still too small. Again, you gotta play around with this before you start your live stream so you have a better idea of what it's gonna look like. All right, one of the new ones that I added this year is the ability to grab your um, uploaded avatar or portrait. So for that, what you would do is a browser source. And then you go to local file. And here's your participant avatar. And I'm gonna leave the rest the same for the moment. And there I am, there's my face. So if, whatever, however you wanted to do that, um, there's also the team avatar. The team that I'm a part of doesn't have an avatar, so there would be nothing to grab, um, but there's that. And so you can, you can essentially choose to have anything that doesn't have team in front of it is about yourself. Anything that does have team in front of it is from your team. So here's, if you wanted to keep track of how much your team has raised or how much you've raised, um, there's, you can see who the team captain is. So there's all kinds of information that you can make use of. All of this stuff will update every 15 seconds or so. All right, that's all you need to know in order to take advantage of this software and use it in OBS and have your data update every 15 seconds. Every time someone donates, within 15 seconds it'll appear, you'll get your alert, 
you got a donation. And the data up here will change. So thank you very much for using this. And remember that we're saving the kids with the money that we're raising. It's for the kids. Bye.